if you're listening to this on Monday, it is the Boston Marathon. I think the Guardians pitchers, honestly, were just doing their part to train for the marathon, doing all that walking. No? Okay. Well, we'll talk about the Guardians' wild win. At least they ended the Yankee series with a wild walk-off win. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the Guardians' rotation problems. And if it's too soon to start making some minor changes to the offense, and we'll get into that Boston series. It is time for Lockdown Guardians. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Do you like our new fancy intro? Uh, Make sure you comment and let us know below. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond eBay Motors, to over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to bring home the big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to us customers. Whew, mouthful there. I want to thank you all for joining us. We know it was a bit of a up and down weekend. Missing baseball on Friday. Mounds of disappointment on Saturday. And <laughs> some bits of disappointment on Sunday as well. But at the end... You know, this is the can't quit kids for a reason. They had every reason at various points to feel like they were, you know, out of this. And, uh, you know, if you go back and listen to my Thursday show, I said, what is the Yankees' biggest weakness? It's the bullpen. And Cleveland eventually got to that bullpen. Bullpen. Uh, They had a chance to do it in the game one of the doubleheader as well. Unfortunately, couldn't pull it off there. But they did get this win by just keeping on the pressure. And... You might say, well, the Yankees had some defensive miscues. Guess guess what? It, it, it's putting the pressure and keeping the pressure on that leads to those moments. And this team just keeps trying. It is not until the final out is done. No one is taking anything for granted and uh, for granted, not for granted, granted. And uh, yeah, it's a fun team to watch in that regard. Yeah, so far they have proven to be very resilient and, and be able to overcome Deficits, blown saves. Obviously, this is the first one. Also, thank you for making our show Lockdown Guardians your first listen today and everywhere you get podcasts, especially after that wild weekend. And we heard from some people on YouTube talking about whether or not they listen after a win or a loss. So we'll we'll test that theory since the Guardians did have two disappointing losses over the weekend and um, one you know win on Sunday, which was this a nice way to cap off the weekend. Pressure, yeah. I mean, it's just. The team doesn't quit for sure. They they've shown they've been able to come back and overcome issues. Um, and like you said, with with the defense, like the Yankees' bad defense, you still have to take advantage of those those mistakes, right? Like the errors by Rizzo, you have to capitalize on that. Look, the the Yankees sure did their fair share of capitalizing on the Guardians' mistakes over the weekend, and I don't think any Yankees fans are saying, "Well, the only one because the Guardians made mistakes." Well, maybe if that's true, but. You know, they still had to go ahead and, and capitalize on that. So you're taking the wins no matter how you can get. The Guardians are 10 and 5. You cannot take that away from them. And they technically are in first place, even though we're not going to sit here and say any of that matters. But they're, you know, they're banking wins right now. And you salvage a win. You feel good about that. It's much easier to fly to Boston and have to play an 11 a.m. game for Jesus. That's ridiculous, by the way. Um, I know it's a, it's a tradition and everything, but. There's nothing good about athletes training all year to play, to have their body ready to play and re- respond at 7 p.m. every night to play at 11 a.m. Like, it's one thing to go to a West Coast trip at 11 a.m. is just ridiculous. Whatever. Anyway, uh, much better flight to go to Boston after that win, obviously, and end the weekend on a really good note. So, yeah, they're the can't quit kids, at least, and they're finding ways to, to win the game, and you do whatever you can, and and – there, there are some interesting pieces on this roster that made that possible that we'll we'll get into today. First of which, I know Josh Naylor got thrown out at third in this game for no reason. I, I just I don't understand that one. I don't think anybody does. But yeah, man, he, it's hard to criticize his base running gaff when he is literally carrying the offense on his shoulders. Like he, the thing that's hilarious. We're we're gonna get into the Guardians' offensive issues and and things that just we don't like about them, but. The one funny development, Jeff, is that Josh Naylor has never been a guy that takes a lot of walks, right? He is a very swing, and he's still a very swing-happy player um, if you look at just overall swing rates. But he's got a 13% walk rate now, which is third highest in the team, and uh, really we'll say second behind his brother Bo because Estevan Florial is second, but he's only had 25 plate appearances. So uh, 
just a very funny development that a Josh Naylor is. I don't know if it's if it's teams that don't want to pitch to him and he's realizing that because he has been doing a lot of damage, or if we're just seeing him continue to mature as a hitter. I mean, last year it was the ability to hit left-handers. This year he is he's doing everything offensively you can ask for with the bat, less so with the legs. But we don't expect yeah, him. maybe run a little less. <laughs> like the yeah. the stealing the base you're at. You're you station know. to station player. Yeah, but he's is. walking now, which is not. You know, last year was the first time he hit left-handers. Now he's walking. Like, he's taking another step in his game, maybe, I think. No, I mean, we'll see how it pans out over the, the course of the season. And the, the other fun thing is, a year ago, he was a dumpster fire at this time. So this is also... He was getting very unlucky, yeah. Part of the... took him almost a month to get on track um, and start performing. So he is performing well out of the gate. The bad luck isn't there. Um, he's making better swing decisions. I wish he would teach Bo a little bit about those. <laughs> you know, I talk about free swingers on this team. Bo has been solid, but but that's something he could work on. But yeah, Josh is doing it all, which he needs to because Jose's not carrying the load right now. Um, the Bama lineup is abysmal. Um, I, I know we're trying to stay positive and safe in one, but Josh Naylor has to carry a lot because, I mean, a lot of people are dropping it. Yeah, it's it's been rough. I mean, when we when we were talking about the good stuff, the first couple series of the year, it's the, obviously you know the Oakland caveats, which hey, Oakland's been playing better lately, so that's interesting. Uh, the Mariners are the Mariners, and the Twins are kind of struggling too, but they won those two games in, in Minnesota, even though it wasn't the prettiest. But the reason that you know the run differential piled up the way it did, and and the offense was looking good, is you were getting contributions up and down the lineup. You were getting. You know, Tyler Freeman was getting involved. Ramon Laureano was getting involved. Brian Rocchio was was off to a decent start, even though, you know, we know this stuff has ebbs and flows to it. But Josh yeah. Naylor has been, for sure, the one constant. So, yeah, more guys need to step up, which we'll get into. I think another big case in the Sunday win was the versatility. And the reason I say that is because you gave a lot of chess pieces for vote to kind of play with, like, David Fry started the day at first base. He moves the catcher later in the game to, to get Austin Hedges' as bat out of there because you're obviously losing. You needed offense. He did something that, you know, I, I don't want to steal your thunder because I know you texted this to me, but Bo Naylor came in and pinch hit in the late in the, late in the game uh, in the ninth for Freeman, which is something Tito never would have done, which never, was always – ever, ever. Again, and again, Tito had, had good qualities. There's no doubt. He obviously is a Hall of Fame manager for a reason, but that's something he never would have done, and that was vote pulling out all the stops to get the win. So Fry went back to first base and Naylor went to catcher. And then Gabby Arias, who started the game in short, moved to first after the first move of getting rid of Hedges out. And then he went to right field to end the game. And by the way, Fry and Hedges, I'm sorry, Fry and Arias both had huge games. Fry has the game, the double in the 10th inning that really Josh probably should have scored on. But, you know, maybe Josh made the right decision not running because he learned his lesson early in the game. And then Arias had a home run off a lefty. And a base Two hit, walks. and then he walked. Or one walk, was it? Yeah, yeah, the one, it was walk. one walk. My my fault. Great day for him off the And off he the had a, a double the day before, so it's two extra base hits over two games. Yeah. If those guys, if you don't have that versatility on your roster, and those guys can't move around like that, you probably lose this game because you don't have the flexibility to make those moves work, and you don't have guys like Fry and Arias in the lineup. Like I, that, I'm not. I'm not saying it's the only thing one in the game, but I think that's the only, that is one of the reasons they were able to win this game was because of the versatility, which is why those two guys made this roster. And I will get to Florio, of course. Yeah. And it was using that whole bench and, and going deep and moving guys around And And listen, Tito's all of a manager. I, people get mad if you say anything remotely bad, but like he was never going to play his third catcher. Like he needed that guy in there. Safety blanket. Yeah, safety yeah. blanket. And to just be like, okay, we're going to go for it. Now at the same time, Bo promptly struck out, um, so it wasn't exactly ideal, but it, it was the right call. I, I defend the call, even if the, you know, we talked about last year. Process results, over result. Process over result, yeah. And this was the process over the result. Um, but, yeah, I that was one of the nice things. Like I said, I think, you know, it, when the game was over, MLB popped up, performers of the game, and there was Gabby Arias between two Yankees hitters. And it's like, you know, we talked about what he did last year. He might might be time to consider getting him a few more at bats. And uh, you know, I bagged on Florio, but maybe 
you know, I'll, I'll happily be wrong. I will always happily be wrong. Florida had a great weekend. Two home runs, what, tied for second on the team in home runs after just this weekend. He had a walk, and he also, he should have had two walks. The uh, Oh, was terrible game, call in the ninth, game one. Oh, my God, in game that one. Was, that was oh. just an embarrassingly bad call. That terrible. second pitch in that event, or the, the strike three, call. was ball three, just, you know, a pitch earlier. So, yeah, just it was absolutely a foot outside. Well. So, yeah, and, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. We'll talk about some lineup shakeups uh, later in the show, but. Yeah, the, the the Guardians don't win this game without Florial, obviously, because he had the, the go ahead home run, which was which was huge and good for him because I know that had to feel good against the Yankees, a team who never gave him a chance. Yeah, we both didn't really love that move to begin with, but um, I think we both again would be happy to be wrong. And the way their other outfielders are going um, doesn't necessarily say that Florial shouldn't get more chances. I mean, there's a, again, there's a reason they made this team, the same reason Arias and Fry made this team, and it showed on Sunday in that win. We can talk about the bullpen a little bit. We'll talk more about if it's too early for offensive changes. Uh, we'll talk about the two newcomers, not newcomers. We'll talk about two rotation additions, if that's going to help solve all the problems this rotation is having right now. No. So stick with us. <laughs> Lockdown Guardians. Well, whatever the Guardians decide to do, eBay always has the eBay Motors always has the right parts for you. Passion, drive, and patience are the winning formula for championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the Hunter Gaddis, the MVP of the bullpen, and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. The Guardians, they're competitive. Jeff and I, I don't know if we're super competitive together. Sometimes we're competitive about who gets to say which words because, you know, we like to cut each other off. We're, we're always trying to get better at that. So we're competitive people in that respect. Um, so we have competitive sides. <laughs> uh, my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It is a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, build up amazing cities that bring you money, big money. The best part is you can mess with your friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like in Monopoly, but I can also rob them of their riches and their vaults to take their money. And the leaderboards can show me who has the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. It's not just a competitive side that loves that you can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get into the game, join your friends, download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store or the Google Play Store. Guardians and Red Sox, if you're listening to this in the a.m. on Monday, they pay, play at 11 a.m. for Patriot Day on the Boston Marathon. You can catch that action and all the action on Sirius XM and the Boston Series just by searching Guardians on the app. Um, yeah, so more more Gabriel Arias, more Esteban Florida. We'll talk about that a little bit. The bullpen, you know, there were some hiccups this weekend. I won't say it was per. It definitely wasn't perfect. But uh, they were able to overcome the blown, first blown save by Class A, which, you know, he was six Tammy for six. Tammy was insistent that Brennan should have had that ball. Uh, I couldn't watch. I had a uh, I, I set up play date, so I was walking around with headphones in. But Hammy was quite insistent in both that inning and that afterwards. Now, I know you don't agree, but I'm just going to say that Hammy was very insistent about that one. I don't think it's that I don't agree. I just think that it would have been – I mean, I think Brennan is capable of making that catch because he is – a good right fielder. We've seen him make good, good defensive plays. I mean, at this point, his glove is the reason he's still playing because the offense hasn't been there yet. But so I think he can make that play. Um, I don't know if it would have been an easy play, but I think it's probably a play that a guy like Will Brennan probably should make. I'm not saying all right fielders are going to make that play, but I think he is one that should. Real quickly, I wanted to ask a question to our listeners. Let's do something new. Let's do a poll today. Because we're going to talk about this bullpen a little bit, because obviously they've played, they pitch very well, and they've been relying on pretty heavily. So, which let us know in the comments or on Twitter, wherever you want to do it. Which non obviously Class A is not excluded from this, even though he blew the bullpen. So, 
or blew the, the, the save on Sunday. But um, which non class A reliever do you trust the most right now? I think you everybody knows Jeff and mine answers right now. HG, Who that is HG, Home Garden Television. Big HG, right? Yeah, That's someone's funny. someone's nickname for him was uh. Hunter something. I have to go back and find the nickname on Twitter. It was really uh, good you nickname. can, by the way, uh, we probably can't have him on the show anymore because he's on the roster, but you can go find God. He was the first player we interviewed on this channel back before Justin was on here. So you can go find me having a discussion with him where, uh, I mean, I'm just letting it all hang out. I'm throwing theories at him about like, well, hey, you know, you have a higher home run rate. Do you think it could be this? This team seems to like it. You get to hear some of his thoughts and takes on it. Uh, good dude. Fun interview. Uh, so I'll go recommend checking that out. Yeah. All right, the rotation. Obviously, not a good weekend for the rotation. It's not been a good season, really, ever since they lost Shane Bieber. Um, just not a lot of good performances at all. In fact, the last time a Guardians pitcher, a starting pitcher, completed six innings, completed. So Logan Allen was one out away on Sunday from getting through six innings. He was also the last starter to get through six innings, and that was way back on April 3rd. Yes, that was more than 12 days ago. And he went eight. He went six innings in the Guardians eight to nothing win at Seattle. That was the second series of the year. So the Guardians have now played one, two, three, four, five, six series, and they have only had they haven't had one starting pitcher go six innings since the second series of the year. So not great. And the bullpen continues to get taxed. I looked it up. Uh, I looked it up on, on Saturday before Sunday's game, but um, after Sunday's game, Jeff, the Guardians. Bullpen has the eighth most innings of any bullpen in baseball. It's 62 in a third inning so far. 62 innings. That's kind the eighth most not higher, at least in ranking. Yeah, really. Well, again, you take 12 of those Beaver or 12 of those Beaver innings out, and it's probably even worse. Um, the rotation has thrown 72 and two thirds. So that's, you know, roughly a 10 inning gap. The, the Guardians have the fifth least um, starters innings in baseball so far this year. And they're a company you don't want to be in because, like, I put the Cubs rotation here just for a comparison. They have the least – they have the, the lo lowest gap is the Cubs have the least amount of starting pitching innings so far this year, and their bullpen has 64 innings. So um, they have the least amount of overlap. But the Guardians starting pitchers are up there with um, the Marlins, which their rotation is not good. It's not where you want to be. It's and... like all injured. They're down like five starters. Yeah, they have the Marlins ahead of them, the Twins, who have a, a very light rotation right now, the White Sox, whose rotation obviously stinks, and the Cubs, who have the worst rotation in terms of uh, – I shouldn't say worst. The, the Cubs, uh, pitching is good. They just have the least amount of innings covered by their uh, injury starters. And the Braves, steel. the Braves are ahead of the Guardians too, and they just lost Spencer Strider. So, again, this is a company you do not want to be in. Yeah. Um, it's not great right now. It's just <laughs> – well, it's just, it's hard because, you know, Tanner's been inconsistent and you and I thought he'd be the ace. Shane was great and now he's done. Logan Allen has, you know, been up and down for his career. His, his, he's a great athlete with solid stuff, but not overpowering. Tristan McKenzie has been kind of a dumpster fire. Um, Carlos Carrasco, he's been a magician, right? Like that guy probably should have given up like five runs in every single start, yet somehow he manages to get out of everything. Seriously, um, and Gavin Williams is hurt. Like in some respects, it's none of this is shocking, but there is not. Unfortunately, you know, hopefully Tanner tightens up. Logan Allen tightens up a little bit as well in a good no way. Choice. For both they have to. And Gavin Williams gets healthy, and then things will turn based just around that. Because right now, no one's no one's peaking. No one. Everyone's kind of mad or worse. Yeah, and and to be fair, like the rotation has. I was going to say, like the Yankees are obviously the best offense they've faced so far. And this was going to be a problem because the Yankees walk more than anybody in baseball as an mm -hmm. offense. So it was, you know, a team that walks a lot of batters and a team that walks a lot as a, as a hitter, as hitters was a very bad combination. And that exposed that. So it's just about throwing strikes. They have to, they have it. And they need Allen and, and Bobby both to get in the strikes on more consistently. I, the McKenzie thing, I don't know. I don't know what to think there. He said after his start on Saturday, he feels healthy. He feels good out there. He just was missing spots, but he's always, his velocity has always ebbed and flowed throughout his career. I just know in the minors, McKenzie, like anytime he was not throwing strikes, anytime he just did not look good, 
it was always because he wound up being injured. Like he would have have stretches like this where he just couldn't throw strikes. He didn't look good. And then a couple of day a day or a couple of days later, you'd find out he was hurt. Like that yeah. seemed to be how it went. When he was in the minors. Like, and he says he feels fine. So you, I guess you have to believe him. But it's like that was usually the case for him when I know the, the minors aren't the majors, as we've talked about a lot on the show, that the translation is, is so poor these days. But Anytime he struggled in the minors, you know, it, it was usually because he was not healthy. And, and that's what we have to go on. The other thing to point out with that, too, is is not just that he's unhealthy. It's that um, when his walks were going up, we saw that unhealthiness as well. That it's not just about the decrease in velocity. It's the issues with command. When he was at his best, when he was excelling, when he was that guy who was like maybe, you know, ninth or tenth in the Cy Young conversation, the command was impeccable and he's currently not missing bats and he is missing the zone instead. Yeah. Yeah. Bad and combat. and really Cleveland has no choice, but to help him get it right because they can't, if they don't have Bieber anymore, you don't have a lot of options. And that's why the rotation is kind of a question mark right now that doesn't have a lot of answers. There's no depth to turn to Curry's going to join the rotation on Monday or today. And then Ben Lively's going to join the rotation on Wednesday. We'll talk a little bit about that and how they're going to make that work. And, what to do about the rotation if it can settle down. We'll talk about a little bit more about the lineup, and then we'll look ahead to the rest of the Boston series. So stick with us here on Lockdown Guardians. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investments and retirement accounts in one place with Yahoo Finance? You can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access expert analysis you need to end your portfolio with confidence. I, for example, have... <laughs> Technically, three separate retirements. One of them I will never get. But, uh, you know, this is I could actually look at all three of them in one place using Yahoo Finance to consolidate them. Uh, let's get straight to the point. You want to grow your portfolio and deal with rising cost of inflation to pay off your debt or your mortgage. Pretty much anything standing in the way of financial freedom with Yahoo Finance. You can a- get access to the news, data and tools you need in order to help reach that financial freedom. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or looking for extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools you need. They're the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle. Uh, With the community of over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. Once again, you can check out the all of the action in Boston this week, starting at 11 a.m. On, on Monday, and then the other three games in Boston on your SiriusXM app by just searching Guardians. All right, so we know... Xavier Curry is going to make today's start. I would assume Peter Strzelecki is going to be the yes. move to bring him up. Um, Wednesday is the bigger question. That will be Ben Lively joining the rotation. I I have a tough time seeing who this is going to be because the only options are you can't put it. You can't send a hitter down because no. you'd be out of balance. You can't have that many pitchers. So, although do they have what do they have right now? They have. I'm pretty sure they're at max. They have four starters right now. Um, one, Nine and they numbers. have one, two, th- yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine relievers. So, yeah, yeah when they when they bring Curry back, they'll be at the maximum amount of pitchers again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they'll have to make a move for a pitcher uh, for Lively on Wednesday. I they really trusted Eli Morgan. He's been better, but like you know, you were saying before, like. BD has been good so far. It's too soon to give up on him. And he's been really good. And he seems to be a leader, so they value that. Smith has options, but I, I find it very hard to believe you can send Kate Smith down the way he's pitched right now. I guess Nick Sandlin could be the other guy. He's pitched too well, too. He's I mean, I, I he get the home I'm run just... over the weekend, but he's been too great. The only guy I can really think of is Eli Morgan. That's the only one I can think of. Because they're not going to cut bait on Barlow um, this early. They traded. And it's funny to me how many people have the, like, the wrong data, like I can't believe we gave up Eniel for Florial, or I can't believe we gave up Cody Morris for um, for Barlow. It's like no, they gave up Eniel for Barlow and Morris for. But I've, I've seen a lot of comments where they forget which trade was which. But 
they're not going to cut bait on Barlow. So it comes down to, you know, one of these guys. And I know Kate Smith has been fantastic, but he was the guy who only made this team because they couldn't find anyone else. And I don't know if that affects, you know, if what he has done in the first few weeks is enough to change a point of view. Personally, for me, I would, how he's pitched, he is, I'm, he's been one of the best relievers in baseball early. I mean, on. I mean, I, besides Hunter Caddis. Yeah, I, I, I personally, it's at this point in time to me, it, it should be Morgan or McKenzie, um, especially if you're bringing up two starters. That means two starters going away. And Shreslecki is up here because of Bieber. So um, going back to McKenzie, just not looking right. It's like, does he need to go and work on things in AAA? He has an option left. You know, someone's losing a spot in that rotation. So maybe it is McKenzie. Yeah, I, I could see it being McKenzie for sure. I mean, he's – they've got to get him to figure out how to throw strikes. Again, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago too, just saying like out of spring training that he felt like the ball wasn't coming out of his hand good and it just – Lively, I, I don't have a lot of confidence. I'm going to be honest. I don't have a lot of confidence in Lively. He was not good for the Reds last year. He hasn't I'd been good for at, his career. I'd have to look at the home road splits. Like I haven't, I haven't looked closely enough at them, and I know – Cincinnati has a band box, obviously. So did, was he better on the road than at home? I don't know, but he has been a strikes. serviceable depth arm. Like that is his nickname is serviceable death arm depth arm. Who doesn't have options? So a little bit. Less he has many options. options, but I mean, this is he like, you know, options. he's been with Philly and Kansas City and then Cincinnati and now Cleveland in the last six years. When you've been with five different teams, it's because you're your depth. You know, you're not a, a guy. His his best look is when not, he came up with Philly. It's not quality depth. That's the problem. That's that's where no. the Guardians are in trouble. You know, you don't have Cal Quantrill anymore, and everybody was like, ah, oh, he stunk. But, shh, you know, Scott Barlow has been off to a rough start, too. And um, say what you will about Cal, but he went out there and shoot up innings sometimes. And it's early. So let's, you know, you have to allow allow guys to build up and figure things out. Like, the biggest, I know offense was obviously a question mark coming into the year, but the rotation itself had the most variables in terms of outcomes. Like there was a version of this rotation that was the best in baseball. And there was a rotate version of this rotation that was it's very sketchy one. because yeah, the current one where Beavers hurt and McKenzie is not effective and maybe hurt. And then you've got a couple of sophomores, one's injured and the other two are, are having their hiccups early in the season here for different reasons. Uh, that's the version you couldn't afford to have with this offense when it's streaky, which we'll talk about in a second. But this version of, of the rotation was the, the scariest one, and it's, it's played out so far. So hopefully they'll have time to figure it out. Hopefully Gavin Williams comes back, and that helps. But I don't know how much you can lay on his shoulders when he comes back. And Bybee and I, you really need Bybee and Allen to just go out there and, and settle things down because you can't count on Carrasco who knows McKenzie you can't sit there and say oh we're going to count on Curry and Lively because you're just hoping for five innings for both of them honestly like, yeah if they get they both get through five innings and you have a chance to win the game <clears throat> that's the new definition of the quality start for the Guardians at this point that's that's a problem I mean, um, Curry was a serviceable fifth starter a year ago you're just hoping you can do that again just didn't get very deep into games yeah no. like those guys Curry Carrasco and 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 Lively are hoping for five at this point, Bybee and Allen, you need six, six plus. And then when Williams comes back, who knows? But that's just kind of where you're at right now until things settle down. And you, they don't have any other options though, either. Like there's, there's no one to turn to. There's Daniel Spino's not, not pitching and Joey Cantillo's hurt. And Will Dion's off to a rough start. You're not going to throw more rookies at this. Like they didn't go out and get depth over the off season. And this is where they are. They traded depth and. Well, I are. mean, this um, is their depth. Their their depth. They're the guys that are scheduled to come up and, and, and play. It's April fifteenth, and they're diving into it like they did a year it's, ago. You know, and they don't have they don't have a Bybee and a William and Allen uh, Williams and Allen to go to this year. It's Curry and Lively, and I like Xavier and Curry. He was in my wedding photos. I love the guy, but it's not the same as no Allen and, Bybee and, and Williams, and it's not the same as McKenzie either. Like, yeah, like it or not, I know McKenzie has struggled, but. The Guardians need Tristan McKenzie in the worst way. Like he has to step up and get back to the pitcher he can be because he's the guy who holds the glue the rotation together at this point. He has the most experience and he I'm not saying he has the most upside because I think Bybee at this point has more upside, but that's a guy you need to be able to count on every fifth day for six plus innings. You have to. And 
without him, it's just bad. And then I think the other underrated aspect with all of this too is Joey Cantillo. Like not only are they down their other guys, it's like Cantillo was making a name for himself in camp. He was the the close. That's not a guy pitching who can't throw strikes, I, he I know but, strikes last year. But you, you just need depth right now, right? Like, would you rather have Cantillo than Lively? I mean, that's that's the thing. It's uh yeah, it, they they're just down a lot. And it hurts. you know, this is gonna provide opportunities for guys to prove that they have it or they don't. Like the we've had the issues over the years of the offense. Um, more not getting time. those opportunities. Well, if you're a pitcher and you're in the upper part of the system, get ready. Yeah, thank God for Hunter Gaddis, who I believe right now has a has the second lowest FIP on the fielding and independent pitching on the team for um in class A. So thank God for the bullpen so far. But how much how much more can they rely on that bullpen? I don't know. I the, think the, uh, the, Bieber the, is technically the the the, the lowest. I met I met him of relievers, oh. but um the good thing about the bullpen is I know they've been used very heavily early on, but the good thing about the bullpen to me is at least you have reinforcements, right? Like we, we were talking off air about Nick Enright. Um, yeah. I know Frank Wallamon is there, but I, I still think there's some things to be worked out with him before he really jumps into the mix. Hunter, um, Andrew Walters is coming. Anthony goes has looked good so far. So like there are bullpen options to help you out if you need to, if you can get him on the 40, which is going to be the trick. Um, what do you think? Do you, we're running out of time here, but I wanted to quickly uh, mention this, but too soon. I, I, it's only been 15 games, but, you know, Brennan, Loriano, your offense is kind of in the same pro- uh, same problem it was a year ago with uh, Oscar and Brennan and Straw. It's uh, it's not been good from there, two guys in the outfield. Is it too soon to get more playing time to Florio and Arias? Like, I would try Arias in right field. I would try Florio in center field and just de- replace him defensively late in the game if he is not a quality center fielder. He's a better right fielder, but... They talked we, and talked in spring training about riding the hot hand. Maybe this is a, it's. I know it's 15 games, but maybe you need a spark from those guys. Well, I mean, I look at it right now. It's like Florio was known to be a guy who can play streaky. center field, you know, and yeah. streaky, but he's known to you know be able to play center field and also like, uh, you know, yeah, he can play at various parts. It's like I don't know, like take a chance. All right, right now, Tyler Freeman is hitting worse than Miles Straw. Like it's just yeah. the truth and of Rokio it. It's really a little bit. Yeah, it, but the Brennan and Freeman in particular are rough. Like those are your two guys with sub 500 OPSs. It, it's it, you know finding ways to maybe give Arias and Florial, and I'm not even sure they're the answers. But like ride the hot hand. That's what this lineup is supposed to be: riding the hot hand and seeing who's going to perform. And right now, you know, Brennan in particular is that guy. I wonder if he would be you know, the first guy gone, if we could add a bat just because it's been a year of rough data, whereas is Freeman doesn't have that, but I am curious to see where this team goes. I would, I, I think you got to ride the hot hand. Yeah. If you can get a spark from any of those guys, why not take it? Like if, if getting more at bats and those are two swing profiles that probably need more at bats, honestly, the way Arias and Florial have performed in their career as short lived as it is. Those are guys whose swings may need more, more at bats in order to be more consistent. So if they can give you a spark, you might as well do it. All right, Guardians and Red Sox four-game series. Savion Curry Monday, Cutter Crawford. Tuesday is Bybee and Whitlock. Wednesday is Lively. And then um, Thursday is Carlos Carrasco. The Red Sox have not announced a pitcher for Thursday. Wednesday is Tanner Houck versus Lively. So we'll cover it all this week. We'll talk about some college baseball on Tuesday as well. Interesting weekend in college baseball, interesting stuff going on in the minors for the guardians too. We're going to cover all that this week. No, hundred percent. There's so much to talk about. Thank you for joining us. I'll do our every day or someone like buck nuts. I saw who uh, watches daily new win or lose. We appreciate all of you. Absolutely. Thank you. And as always go, go guardians, go let's beat these red Sox.